Kevin, how are you? Great. Hello <laughs> from Texas. Thank you. Where are you in Texas? It's a big I'm in state. Houston. Houston. Oh, Houston. Oh, yeah. it must be hot and humid there. Oh, huh? it's hot. Ugh. I got to talk to you about Deep Space Nine, though, of course. Talk. Um, let's grab a quick oh, picture first. Yeah, let's grab a picture. <laughs> okay. Pressing the button now. Perfect. Enjoy the chat. Thank, Thank you. you. You know, Deep Space Nine had uh, two very strong female characters, you and Kira. Yeah. Was there any competition between you two about who was getting more attention on the show while you did that? I think there's a natural uh, competition that sort of happens, not in a in a big rivalry kind of way, but just yeah. in a, we're the only two females. There's a sort of right. an energy that happens, but um, it, she's the female lead. So I didn't have any problem with her being in it more. You know what I mean? Right, right. I, it was, in a, and I sort of, um, at first, I didn't really know what to do with Dax, so... I got to ease into it. They, they, because they were trying to figure out the writing and how to write Dax with all the, the life. Right. Uh, speaking, speaking of writing, uh, you know, Star Trek has the most intense fan base of probably anything. And uh, if if the fans aren't liking how a story is going, how much influence do they have over that? Would the writers actually change the storyline, or would you do your part different if if, the, if you got feedback from fans? I I wish that was true, but I don't think so. Other than right. I think actually right now where the fans have a lot of power is if you want to see us at a convention, if you, you know, email the convention hall and or the promoter and say like Galaxy Con and say, I want to see Terry Farrell uh, and right. if enough people start requesting, then then I get to come more often, that kind of thing, because that's right. where there's some power there. But in terms of a storyline, no um not yeah. really because it's yeah. not just the the writers it's the executive producer exactly. it's the studio yeah. right uh -huh. yeah and there's a bible to the script um all all uh well most series um things like lost didn't have a bible they just kept writing but <laughs> most, <laughs> most things have a beginning a finite stopping point where they would they project it to go over six years and it, if the show gets that's why it's weird if you watch a show and it only went three seasons, but it was written right. for six, it'll end and you'll go, well, where did that go? Like, <laughs> what happened? Right. Now you, went to, you went to Becker right after doing years. Talk about two different characters, Reggie right. and uh, Dax. Was that tough? Yeah, it was a huge adjustment. It was exciting because uh, my contract had ended. And what was even more exciting was that I didn't know, <laughs> exciting and nerve wracking, that I had Becker for sure until after I left, uh, my contract ended. So, but what was great is it was, they were both on the Paramount lot. Right, do you prefer, do you prefer doing comedy or drama as an actor? I prefer drama because there's always comedy and drama. There's no way not to right. have comedy and drama, but comedy weirdly is super serious business. The thing that was really hard for, or, or disappointing for me was I was, I finally felt like I was getting my rhythm and Becker yeah. because we had the 200 people um, every time we did the show. And I mean, that thankfully, because it was a funny show. Thank you. I love doing that show. Reggie was a great character. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I really love doing her. And, um, you know, I didn't realize speaking of comedy, that was you and back to school. Uh, right. <laughs> so different. Did uh, Sam Kennison scream at you while you did that? Say it! Say it! All right. I'll say it. Uh, oh, I'm, you know, what's so great is this is so crazy. Um, I got to go see Sam Kennison in concert and oh, uh, wow. so I got backstage tickets, which really weren't backstage. It was up on some weird level. And I got to watch it with David Bowie. Oh, I got to incredible. watch him with David Bowie. Right. Wow. And the weird thing is I never met him. Wow. Isn't that weird? Like I wasn't there the day he had his scene. It wasn't that an awesome scene. Uh-huh. When pussy What about, like what about you. Rodney? Was he crazy on that on that during the So movie? nice.
so was nice. He really? Yeah, I but you know what? I didn't have scenes didn't with him. What he was doing, but was he more in a groove then by by doing that movie? Was he what? Well, he, was he more comfortable doing movies at that time? Because I heard him oh. say he was just crazy. Yeah. Well, no, he's he was. I think for the people he was working in a scene with. Yeah, I never had a one-on-one -on -one scene with him, but he would come say good morning to me every morning. Did he flirt with you on the? Yes, set? totally. <laughs> <laughs> and I loved it. It's so sweet. What do you say you and I have dinner tonight? We could talk about Joyce. She's my favorite writer. <sighs> well, you're not the usual freshman, but I'm sorry I can't. The thing is, I'm sort of going with someone. Oh, where are you going? That's a good question. Actually, I'd like to join you, but I have class tonight. How about tomorrow night? I have class then, too. I'll tell you what, then. Why don't you call me sometime when you have no class? <laughs> All right. Maybe I will. So sweet. And he was very kind to me. We'd bump into each other outside of um, after we got done working. Yeah. And we'd see each other places. And he was just a gentleman and very kind. He's oh, a great. really sweet man. Do you think neurotic a, but very sweet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you think there's going to be a Deep Space Nine movie or is no? Is Rick it, Berman told us right from the get go there wouldn't be, and if there would have been, it would have been right after the next gen people, right? Right, right. When all of us were younger, like thirty years okay. ago, twenty five years are, ago. <laughs> are you doing anything now? Or are you officially retired? I am about to. I don't. I'm toying with that. Um, my son, I'm about to become an empty nester. I take him to college in three weeks. Oh, and I've been yeah. a single mom for a long time. And um, so you and I were born the same year, 63. So get out. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> you're one month older than me. I was born in December. So Oh, you're a baby. <laughs> He's a little young for you, isn't he? He's 27. I'm 28. 328, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> What's your secret for looking so young? Oh, uh, filters. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Just stay a distance. <laughs> uh, okay. I think my mom's genes were very kind to me. Okay. But That's I good. look in the mirror and I see, you know, all of it kind of doing its thing. And it's like, well, you know what? What are you going to do? You can't do anything, right? It's, I mean, not really. It's the choices. You get to look older or you look kind of like a monster because you can tell. Uh, yeah, people do yeah. stuff you can tell it's expensive and you don't know what you're going to look like when they're done so they killed Dax off right in deep space yes Nine. so there's no way you could do that role again anyway well right? can i just say they killed spock too <laughs> yeah. do you remember that yeah no one talked about that he just came back right Mm -hmm. Coming down to a few seconds. Oh, dang. Okay. Very nice to talk with you. Thank you so very nice much. nice to meet you. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. All the best to you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you